Hello everybody and welcome to episode 39 of the Pentagon Challenge. It's time to take a step back and reflect on the season so far and uh, what on earth I must do to have another good second half to the season to make sure that Shenshua do finish in a good position. But uh, it also helps that we're in a sort of um, it's sort of shutdown period as we have an Asian Cup uh, international tournament on at the moment. So uh, Chinese uh, Super League football has ceased for the time being. So uh, I have to prepare a few uh, summer friendlies in order to uh, make things tick and make sure everyone is fit. But the uh, bad news for uh, my sort of confidence in myself is that Vasco da Gama have been relegated directly back to the uh, first division in South Africa. Now you must be thinking, surely I'm uh, over that. Uh, I don't need to think about Vasco anymore. But now I was uh, lamenting that the best players were sold by the previous manager. Uh, he was obviously uh, in need of balancing the books. But to go from uh, promotion automatically by winning the league to coming fifth in the first season, then ninth, then 14th and then finally 16th in uh, just a matter of a few seasons is very very sad to see and uh, my former coach uh, Tinsuelo Shabalala is the new full time manager so congratulations to him he will make a very very good manager as I said before so um, it's just a matter of uh, what on earth Vasco da Gama's uh, future plans are because you don't want them going back into the first division and then suffering uh, you know another relegation due to financial difficulty or whatever so this is uh, what stands in their way Amazulu uh, have won automatic promotion um, they've won the mini league so they get to go up um, but in reality they should be able to cope with most of these teams in the lower regions but it's a very competitive league if you lose too often then you're more than likely going to uh, you know miss out on a uh, chance at the top three so anyway let's uh, concentrate on Shenshua Shen again and uh, take a look at the Super League. Now, incredibly, despite not winning any games since we last met, we are still in ninth position. I don't know how we've done it, but look at the chasm that now splits ourselves from Bay Kong. It's getting very, very compelling and massive now. If only we turned those draws into wins, it would make such a big difference. But it's just very, very uh, confusing as to what on earth is going wrong. You can see no wins in the last four, or one, yeah, no wins in the last four, and that means Jiangsu, Wuhan, Changchung, Renhe, and Chongqing are all catching us very, very quickly, and Tianjin are also uh, on the move. So what on earth must I do to change this? Well, you can say this break has come at the right time, but we only got a one-all draw out of Tianjin at home, after playing the Shangdong in the last episode, it took an 87th minute equaliser to stop the rot there. And then worse was to come against the team we beat on the opening day. We gave away a soft penalty and we couldn't break the deadlock again. It was absolutely, uh, you know, hand, head in hand stuff to watch. And I just don't know what is going wrong with the team. It's getting absolutely disgraceful now. But... Uh, one good thing came out with this run it was a nil all draw with, with Shang Gang for the second time we've uh, drawn with them but we won't be anywhere near them in the league if form continues and then incredibly Liu Dan Suo has been injured again it was in the middle of the match so a very uh, unlikely thing to happen to me I very rarely had goalkeepers injured mid match especially uh, to the um, degree of a dislocated shoulder that's a very bad injury to get and then worse was to come these feckin penalties I'm absolutely you know fed up of them that's the seventh penalty shoot I think I've lost it's getting out of a hand and it just started off on the wrong foot completely uh, we missed the first penalty and the third penalty of the sequence and that allowed my bitter rivals Hang Zhu to get payback on me and um, they won the shootout 4-2 but we took the lead 2-0 into half time, then gave it away, sort of like uh, how we benefited from um, beating uh, Beijing from two goals down. So, it, you know, football manager does like to uh, mess around with you sometimes, but this is just unacceptable. We were the better team, and the guys just lost all concentration. They were pretty tired, um, but they just lost all concentration. Should never have been so uh, diligent as to give away 
cheap goals like that. And then also the second goalkeeper, Wang Jingping, was injured mid-match. So that just made things worse. He was doing a good job. And maybe, just maybe the substitution of the goalkeeper made the critical difference. But that's just really, really bad to have two goalkeepers injured in a league which has strict uh, rules on what, on what goalkeepers you can uh, hire and which ones you can't. So, yeah, it's just mind-boggling. Shen Shui, again, I don't know what is, the, what is wrong with the foundations of the club. But I just cannot seem to uh, rescue them. I had all the momentum in the world that I needed to go on a big run and finish in the top six. But now it, it needs a massive turnaround with uh, starting with uh, Yang Su in 15 days. But uh, the good news is the transfer market is open in China again. And I have pounced on some uh, big transfers, spending a lot of cash, uh, but also selling for a lot of cash as well. So I haven't been uh, reckless with my millions. Um, so let's quickly get started with uh, my new centre back, Lei Tang Long, uh, 30 years of age. Uh, he was with um, Quan Jian, and he's been in very, very good form. So I just felt splashing out on him would be a good idea. Um, he can also play right back. I, I like defenders who can play more than one position. Um, and you can see he's um, he hasn't really done anything else apart from being a good defender. But at 30 years of age, you really uh, do need uh, some defenders who are just willing to defend. And uh, in exchange for being in him in, I let go of Anthony Golek. Uh, I was really hoping for more from him. Uh, it just wasn't at all uh, good enough that uh, he was getting like 6.59 average ratings. I, I thought he was a centre back with tendencies to play on the left, but not to be. He's actually a left back with tendencies to play in the centre, and I was playing him in the centre for the majority of the time. He was very, very poor, getting 6.59 average ratings. So I made a big profit on him. He was in for free, and then I made a 600,000 euros profit. Now, you must be delighted to see an old friend back. And yes, because of the relegation, uh, Natutuko Radabi said, enough's enough, I want to leave Vasco da Gama. And it looked like no one else was in for him. So I decided, let's bring him back to my uh, employment. And here he is, uh, still uh, as good as ever. He's at a great age at 26. The one thing he hasn't been able to do is uh, receive a cap from South Africa. So they must have a great left back already. Uh, he's been good in my absence, you can see. And uh, that was the year I, I left. And he got a 7.14 average rating in 24 games. And this year he played in all 30 league games. So it's a big risk to uh, bring him in uh, when he's obviously exhausted from a difficult season. But we do get this break. And he is uh, starting to regain his fitness. But uh, he is well rated in this league. You can see massive improvements over Yuranga. Zinlin and the other left backs so I definitely think um, my sort of bias towards him uh, isn't without good cause so uh, he will be my complete win back again and uh, if he is the same Radaby that I know then surely we can start to in improve our wing play it's it's what we are very very bad at now I've been spending big money on uh, more players and understandably I have to uh, go for a goalkeeper and uh, Du Jia, at 28 years of age, he is a reasonably good player. But uh, his injury history is so much better than uh, my other goalkeepers. And uh, he, he's okay. Like Tan Jin are not doing well this season. But he's been loyal to them for a very, very long time. I don't know if he gets a testimonial match in China or not. But uh, we have to spend some money on him. And he will probably be my new number one goalkeeper between now and the end of the season. I'm just... Uh, you know, getting annoyed at my other goalkeepers getting injured. And their uh, last signing so far uh, brought in is Li Tiaxiang. Uh, he's a centre midfielder who can do anything uh, from defend to uh, play in the middle and then go for attacking uh, prowess. So that's really, really good. Uh, Bei Kong let him go for a very cheap fee. But you can see these are insane uh, stats with 10 assists and 3 goals. So surely he'll be getting plenty of game time here. And if he replicates that form, then we'll have another superstar on our hands. Um, Long Cheng has gone the opposite direction. He's now at Tanjin, as I just didn't have any uh, room for him in the club. 
Uh, he, he's a defensive midfielder, and we have plenty of them. And then when he plays in centre back, he's just not as good. So I got a reasonably good uh, payout for him, but not at a profit compared to what my uh, predecessor got from. And then Vitor, I thought about this at the beginning of the season. Should I uh, take the cash and let him go, or uh, let him wear out his contract? And the answer was uh, to sell him to Benfica for three and a half million euros. That's a massive profit already um, when you think about it but unfortunately um, there was no real reason why I had to sell them uh, like Benfica were just rumoured to say uh, they wanted the money uh, uh, they wanted to buy Vitor and uh, he was actually injured um, in a match uh, like a few weeks ago it was a damaged knee cartilage so I just thought look the uh, the cards are against me I should cash out and just as his recovery had been completed I said look Benfica take him for three and a half million and he's yours and thankfully they uh, stopped up the cash but uh, that did upset a few of my players in the dressing room such as um, Kai Wee Kang he was uh, very unhappy that I sold the star player um, under any circumstances so um, I had to go into the team meeting and uh, sort of quell the uh, this this um, discontent so I don't have a history of looking back at the uh, the team meeting so I'll just say I, may, I said the right thing I did need to sell him for the money and uh, he wasn't going to sign a new contract so it was a wise decision but then again nobody can buy out the contracts in China I think that's a rule so he wasn't going to be poached with six months left of his contract he had to see it out or sign a new one but anyway um, as you saw with the goalkeepers two of them are out We've got some guys in international duty, but uh, the, the fitness just needs to be improved. Um, the pre-season or the mid-season fixtures just need to be completed, and then we'll get straight back into Yangsu, and then my next live com will be Quanzian in nearly a month's time. But anyway, let's just uh, quickly get through the um, stats of the team and what has gone right this season, what has gone wrong. So uh, by appearances, uh, Liu Dan Suo by far the most uh, games played with 16 but he won't be playing again for another good few weeks so um, he'll be probably caught by the likes of Ji Ming Hao who I constantly adore he's a great player just 20 years of age and I just hope he can improve some of his other core stats and then he'll be a superstar Ji Ming Hao oh sorry Jesus my memory uh, Kai Hui Kang has also played 11 games he's a very very good defensive midfielder but he hasn't been training too well in this uh, break period, um, Kao Yonding, Ian Ranga, Vladin Karadzic, Yang Kuo, Fu Han, Daniel Mullen and Sun Ji have all played nine games or more. Uh, the goals scored, this is again our big problem. Uh, Karadzic is leading the way with seven, which is better than what he got in last season, uh, nearly actually. He just needs two more goals to pass all of last season and he's been a very, very good player. But uh, Vitor... Uh, scored four goals and he is gone now. So Wang Zihao on uh, three. He'll now play as a striker because um, I just cannot find anyone else in the transfer market that I think could be suitable uh, to play striker. So Wang Zihao will probably be moved up. So that's why I bought another attacking mid. Peng Changming has three goals from uh, the center striker position. He's also um, unhappy with the departure of Vitor Zhang Meng with two goals, Yu Hai, Yang Kuo, Liu Wefeng uh, and Kao Yunding have one goal. Uh, Yang Kuo has four assists which is very very nice considering I play him as a ball winning midfielder some of the time. Fen Yang, four assists, Kao Yunding three, Xin Lin, Chang Ming, Ming Hao, Yu Hai, Sun Ji, Wefeng, Mullen with one assist. Player of the match, Ming Hao twice and then Yunding down to Karadzic have one Man of the Match award. Uh, the best passer uh, is Hugh, Hugh Kwang with 88%. Most yellow cards, Hui Kang again with four. And then all the way down to uh, Kao Yunding with one yellow card. Uh, no one's been sent off. That's great. And then the average rating, Zhi Ming Hao 7.27. Vladin Karadzic 7.11. Uh, Zhang Meng 7.10. Uh, Yang Kuo has 7.04. Uh, Yunding 7.04 so it's confusing Some most of the players are doing well but we're not getting the results and then if we go down to the bottom here you can see Flaxus uh, is doing terribly this season 6.5 in the league and then 6.4 I 
over uh, I don't know what's the matter with him and he'd be straight out the door but I can't find a good replacement for him so that's uh, something that needs to be considered um, who else is not so good um, where well, Fang even though he's getting plenty of assists he's just not scoring goals and uh, that's just something that needs to be uh, dealt with he's just lost all confidence um, Mullen uh, I expect better from such a good player but again it's just not working out for my defenders um, and then who else um, well the goalkeeper 6.89 that's pretty good um, Zinlin 6.8 uh, but yeah he doesn't get to play uh, that often anymore and it's going to be less likely for him to appear when like uh, Radaby is here he'll be my starting left, left back uh, without any doubt so uh, that's pretty much all that needs to be said I have loads of money but I just cannot find the right kind of player to uh, spend it on and the fact that I have one more foreigner slot means I'm looking very very hard in my uh, scouting to see what kind of players I can bring in but you can see the difference between realistic and unrealistic transfers um, it's just crazy um, like if you look transfer listed uh, they're not very very good that those players don't want to come but then you look at players that are for sale and there are some really really good deals um, look at Blair Spittle for example he's a very good age he has uh, you know very low value so he'd be great to come but he, he says no I don't want to come to China whereas other uh, British players such as uh, Luke Graben he's here and um, who else they have uh, Martin Kelly uh, from Liverpool and then uh, they've Jordan much so British people do want to come to China just not to Shanghai Shenzhou due to our terrible uh, form in the league so that just turns a lot of people off and um, th there is a Scottish guy here as well I think it's like um, who is a I forget his name but he is in one of the in the clubs so I'll try and Graham Darren's I think it is uh, let me look it up Graham Darren's um, I'm not spelling it right am I yeah he's here he's at Quanzian as well so Jesus, Kwan Zian really like the British, so um, I wish I could invest in a few uh, British myself because they're, they're generally good value uh, to bring over. But uh, Internacional are selling another striker for good money, but Leo Chiara, uh, he's a guy I'd really love to bring over, but he's not going to leave uh, Palmeiras without uh, much doubt. They're currently top of their league. So Internacional, my uh, parent club actually if you want to check it out and um, where is it overall affiliated clubs so Shenshua, uh we are their affiliate so we can buy their players a little bit easier but some of them I do want uh, they're not going to come but this Carlos Cesar guy like Vitor is upset and he's up for sale but I just don't think uh, going directly to him to solve our striker walls is a good idea you can see he's not even being used for them and he's not tipped for glory like um, Vitor was so we'll just have to say uh, look give me a winger and I'd love to talk I, I'd overspend if necessary but clearly they're just not interested in coming to the club so um, if, if anything else changes I'll let you know but I'm still searching for another striker and another right midfielder or winger maybe even uh, a two for one deal where they play both positions and I'll spend all the money on that player but it's not going to happen at the moment and uh, you know players are just a little bit discontented but with these uh, friendlies we can build up our confidence again such as that 6-0 my assistant manager got so if we build up the confidence get the morale back to uh, good levels we should be able to uh, get a few more wins and make sure relegation is never a problem again so uh that was a pretty long chat. I'm sure it was necessary. Um, but join me once more for the 40th episode of the series against Quan Zian. A must-win game. And uh, until next time, I'll see you then. Bye.